Hello friends, this is Dr. Shailesh Palekar, working as an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sanjuni College of Engineering, Kopargaon. In the previous lecture of the classification of vibration, we have tried to understand the first two categories of classifying the vibration. Here we will discuss the third category of classification of vibration that is according to the behavior of the system. According to the behavior of the system means the mathematical behavior of the system. As we in the further lectures, next lectures, we will discuss how the governing equations or differential equations can be formed and mathematical, mathematically how the vibration problems can be solved. Every mathematical, uh, every <coughs> vibratory system follow the differential equation which will govern the behavior of the system. If this differential equation is linear, then we can explain that those vibrations as linear vibration. And if this differential equation is nonlinear, then the vibrations can be explained as nonlinear vibrations. As you know, the basic components of vibratory systems are mass and spring and damper. So all these three are having certain equation are following certain equation and we can generate a differential equation or governing equation or the behavioral equation of the system. So the linear vibrations, we can define these linear vibrations as if all the basic components means mass, damper and spring of the vibratory system behaves linearly the resulting vibration is known as linear vibrations. So if the linear vi if the vibration is linear, the principle of superposition holds and the mathematical techniques of analysis are well developed. As initially itself I have told that in a vibratory system, to solve the vibratory system we have to formulate the governing equation or behavioral equation of the system. It, that equation is a differential equation and that can be superimposed. As in the case of degrees of freedom definition, we have seen that the systems may have number of degrees of freedom, finite number of degrees of freedom or infinite number of degrees of freedom. So for every degree of freedom, we have to formulate one governing equation. That governing equation is a differential equation and it is independent of other. But a system having two degrees of freedom, then it will have two governing equations or two differential equations. If the system is linear, then those two equations can be superimposed because those equations are of a single system. If they are not linear, then they cannot be superimposed on each other and we can, could not get a single equation or single mathematical expression to solve it to find the different parameters of vibration. So that's why we can say that if the vibration is linear, the principle of superposition holds good and the mathematical techniques of analysis can be developed easily. Now let us move to nonlinear vibration. So this can be defined as any of the basic components behaves nonlinearly. The vibration is called nonlinear vibrations. Means out of these three components, basic components, if any one behave non-linearly or is not following a linear path or linear differential equation, then it becomes non-linear and the vibrations are known as non-linear vibrations. For non-linear vibration, the superposition principle is not valid as just we have discussed and techniques or mathematical analysis are less well known. So they becomes very difficult and as since all vibratory systems tend to behave non-linearly with increasing amplitude of oscillation or knowledge of non-linear vibration is desirable in dealing with practical vibratory systems. As you know, when we have to solve, we have to carry out any analysis, that time we have to assume, normally we are assuming that system is linear. If it is non-linear, then it will become a big domain to solve. Let us Say, take the example of finite element analysis or any type of analysis, that time we have to specifically mention that the system is linear. Otherwise, when we have to move towards non-linear, then it becomes a big domain to solve and that's why here we can say that, that the system or it is less well known or it is difficult to solve. When system becomes 
a linear system becomes non linear in case of vibration the linear vibration becomes non linear for very large amplitude of vibration in that case such systems which are previously linear but because of the input given to the system or the conditions of the system are such that the large amplitudes are developed in the system and the system becomes non linear or vibrations becomes non linear then such system we can explain as chaotic then next category of classifying the vibration and it is the fourth one that is according to the motion of system with respect to axis of the system here we could observe the three different figures in a very first figure the mass and spring is shown or it, this is a shaft and this mass is moving up and down here in the next figure b figure we can say the shaft along with this disc or we can say mass is performing motion approximately perpendicular to the axis of the shaft and in this third case the disc is rotating about the sh shaft so these are the three basic modes of or motion transverse motion longitudinal motion and torsional motion so when the system performs longitudinal longitudinal motion then we can explain those vibration as longitudinal vibration this is first case so this can be explained as or defined as the in this the particles of the shaft or disc move parallel to the axis of the shaft as shown in the diagram in this case the shaft is elongated and shortened alternatively thus executing the tensile and compressive stresses alternatively alternately on the shaft despite of this we can take the example of spring mass system also so when you stretch the spring or mass in the downward direction and relieve the force then what happens spring perform the oscillation and the oscillation during that oscillation spring is compressing and uh, we can see elongating in the cycles such elongation and compression is nothing but that the if we take the axis of that spring then the spring is compressing and elongating that elongation and compression is nothing but the parallel motion of that spring about the axis of that spring or that motion that's why that vibration those vibrations we can explain as longitudinal vibrations or that motion we can explain as longitudinal vibrations then transverse vibration in this type of vibration the particles of the shaft or disc move perpendicular to the axis of the shaft as shown in the diagram here the shaft is straight and bend alternatively and hence bending stresses are induced in this case or in the shaft then the third type of motion we can observe in most of the machine components is twisting and untwisting mode so those types of vibration those types of oscillation we can explain as torsional vibrations so in this case this can be defined as in this the particles of the shaft or disc move in a circle about axis of the shaft as shown in the diagram here the shaft is twisted and untwisted alternatively and hence torsional shear stresses is induced in the shaft so this way we can classify the vibrations in three different modes that is longitudinal vibrations transverse vibrations and torsional vibrations then the last category to classify or differentiate the vibrations as according to the magnitude of actuating force at a given time so deterministic vibration and random vibrations are the two types of vibrations which we can classify based on the magnitude of actuating force so we can define the deterministic vibration as if the value or magnitude of the excitation acting on a vibratory system is known at any given time the excitation is called deterministic the resulting vibration is known as deterministic vibration and the next category that is random vibration in the cases or in some cases the excitation is non deterministic or random if the excitation is random the resulting vibration is called random vibration in this case the vibratory response of the system is also random it can be described only in terms of statistical quantities so 
the very first case that is deterministic vibration as the name indicates that is deterministic vibration so when the value or the magnitude of the excitation that you have provided to the system so that it will perform the vibration as you know the magnitude very well the value of magnitude very well then that system that those vibrations we can explain as deterministic vibration for example the vibrations of any machine as you know the speed of the motor that you have provided so that the system will perform motion and system will perform oscillation or vibration system is showing you vibration that time you can easily calculate the supplied force or the magnitude of supplied force then those vibrations we can explain deterministic vibrations and second category that is the random vibrations as the name indicates that is the random that the supplied frequency or supplied force is unknown to you it is random and still you are observing the vibration in the system then those vibrations we can explain the random vibration the good example of such type of vibrations are the earthquake as well as the wind velocity it is this earthquake or wind velocity this can be predicted only but when the they actually happens that time the velocity may be different and the excitation that is given to the system is very different that is unknown to you up till after that you can calculate it like <clears throat> earthquakes after earthquake we can explain the richter scale of that earthquake but before that we could not predict so this excitation is random in nature and that's why such vibrations we can explain as random vibrations here the time versus force graph we have we can observe in case of deterministic excitation or periodic excitation the excitation force is known to you and you can plot the graph in and will have a good nature but as far as random excitation is given then it is very abrupt in nature and it is unknown to you so this way we can classify the vibrations in different categories so we have studied the five categories of classifying the vibrations thank you